One evangelist by the name of Tiff Shuttleworth said, If you were to go home tonight and fall asleep, and in the middle of the night you were to be awakened to the sound of a trumpet, unlike any you had ever heard before, and in the twinkling of the eye, the rapture were to take place, would you wake up traumatized and fearful? Or would you wake up with joy and expectation, knowing that you were right with God, knowing that all your accounts with God were paid in full? If you don't have the ability to say, I would wake up with joy, I would wake up with expectation, then perhaps you need to prepare your heart. I heard this and found it to be deeply moving. Because how many of us can confidently say, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if the rapture were to take place in these next few moments, we would be caught up in the sky with the Lord? How many of us can say that? How many of us can say that we are right with God? Can you say that you are living for Jesus? Does your heart belong to Him? Is your soul committed to Jesus? Has your mind been renewed and transformed by Him? How many of us can say that? Because here's the thing. Whether you believe it or not, the Word of God is true. And it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Those in Christ will be caught up with Him in the clouds. This is the rapture. This is what we as children of God can look forward to with great hope and joy, a day where we will be caught up with Jesus Christ and meet Him in the air. Now, as glorious of an event as this is, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 to 52, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. The rapture will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You won't have time to fix your life and get right with the Lord. You won't have time to repent and ask for forgiveness. The rapture happens in the twinkling of an eye. You will not have time to run to your prayer closet. You won't have time to forgive your neighbor. You won't have time to tell others about what God has done for you. You won't have time to purge your heart because when the rapture happens, it happens in an instant. It's in the twinkling of an eye. So your best plan of action is to get right with the Lord today. Don't waste the days you have on this earth chasing things that will make you miss out on being caught up in the clouds with Jesus. Imagine the chaos on earth when this takes place. Imagine the news outlets reporting that millions have disappeared, seemingly vanished into thin air. Imagine the distress on the Christian man or woman who know exactly what has just taken place the horror on their faces as they come to the realization that they have been left behind. Yes, they heard about Jesus, they could recite the Word of God, but they were not right with God. They lived a double life, a life where one foot was in the world and the other was in the church. They had one hand on the Bible and the other hand in the world. Anyone lukewarm will not be caught up in the clouds with Christ. Only those who burn for Him, those who live with a holy obsession and an insatiable appetite to serve the kingdom of God, those are the people who will be caught up in the twinkling of an eye. I want to read a short passage of scripture from the book of Matthew, and I pray it will take on a completely new and more profound meaning to you now. Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 to 44 says, Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. 
Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. When the Lord comes to take his people and meet them in the clouds, it doesn't matter who you're associated with. It won't matter who your next of kin is or who you're in business with. The Bible paints a clear picture. In the twinkling of an eye, two men will be in a field. One will be right with God and one will not. The one who is right with God will instantaneously be caught up to Jesus. But the other man will be left to count the cost. On that day, those who will be left behind will count the cost of their sin. Was it worth it? Was it worth gaining the whole world and losing your soul? Was it worth the money, sir? Was it worth the anger and gossip, ma'am? Was the addiction worth it? Those who are left behind will have to endure the tribulation period and the rulership of the Antichrist. And so there will be difficult days ahead for them. So as you listen in this very moment, if you will take one thing away from my message today, take away this. Get right with the Lord. Don't wait. Don't debate. Don't speculate whether or not you've got more time. Tomorrow is promised for none of us. Get right and live right from today. Give your heart to the Lord. It's good to be career-driven. It's good to be into your fitness. It's good to have ambition and to work hard at setting up your own business. But none of these things should ever overshadow the fact that Jesus Christ should be first in your life. He should be at the center of all you do. He should be the one that receives all the glory and honor. So if there is any sin that you need to repent of, turn away from it today. Hell is real. The rapture is real. Heaven is real. Jesus is real. So take action and make peace with God today. Because in the twinkling of an eye, when that day comes, you won't have any time to make any changes or do something about it. So why wait? Get right with God today. We need to turn from evil and look toward our beautiful Savior. Luke chapter 17, verse 30 to 33 says, So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let the one who is on the housetop, with his goods in the house, not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. Jesus is talking to his disciples about his second coming. He reminds us that his second coming will be like any ordinary day. People will be going through their everyday routines. Then we get to verses 30 and 31, where Jesus tells us that we need to be prepared for that day and not be distracted. These illustrations are stressing that people will have no time to prepare when he appears. He then gives us the warning of Lot's wife. In Genesis, God comes to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah due to their rampant sin. Before the destruction, God comes and warns a man named Lot and his family who lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. God commands Lot's family to flee and not turn back. At some point, as they flee, Lot's wife looks back at the city. In an instant, she turns into a pillar of salt. Jesus is warning us here not to be distracted like Lot's wife. If we become so distracted by the world that we completely turn our eyes away from Jesus, we will receive judgment just like Lot's wife. When we make our lives about self-preservation, we lose our lives to God's judgment. However, when we give our lives up to following Jesus, we keep it. To be clear, there will be moments in life that distract us from Jesus. But although every believer will stumble at some point and even fall, those who continue fighting, those who repent and go to Jesus Christ will receive forgiveness. True Christian maturity is not that we don't sin, 
but it's the fact that we turn our eyes back to Jesus when we fall short. However, many people have been so distracted by this world that they have never truly turned to Jesus. On Judgment Day, they will receive judgment like Lot's wife because they have completely turned and rejected God's love. There are so many distractions in life that can cause us to turn our eyes away from Jesus. Sometimes we turn and look to bad things, such as destructive substances, forbidden relationships, and lustful thoughts. When we do, we are looking to fulfill our own desires. However, these desires do not lead to the life that we think it will. Other times we're distracted by things that can be considered good. We become distracted by our jobs, families, and hobbies. While all these things are good, when they force us to turn our eyes away from Jesus, they become idols. So we need to be on guard about any distractions in our life. Be careful being preoccupied with how much money you make, how successful your family is, or how much power you have. When good things become distractions, that can be a massive hindrance in our walk with Christ. Now, God is not calling you to leave your family or quit your job. Instead, He calls you to put Him at first and center in your life. He should be the focus. And while it may feel like you're losing your life by turning from distractions to Jesus, you're actually gaining life. Suppose the restaurant owners I mentioned at the beginning asked people to get off their phones while at the restaurant. It would lead to much quicker service times. What feels to the customers like a loss ends up being a gain. By getting off their phones, they gain shorter meal times, deep relationships with people they're eating with, and a more enjoyable meal experience. Of course, the customers have a choice to get off their phone. However, if they choose to lose a little, they gain a lot. The same is true when it comes to turning from sin to Christ. By turning away from sin, we stop focusing on fulfilling every desire we have. And the thing is, we may lose some relationships with those around us, and we lose the right to be king or queen of our life. However, we gain so much more. We get to be called a child of God. We get to inherit eternal life. And we get to have a deeper, intimate relationship with the one true God. In the same way that customers in a restaurant have the option to get off the phone and focus on the ones they're with, then we have the option to turn our eyes to Jesus. So let me ask you, what distractions do you have in your life right now that are blocking you from seeing Jesus? It may feel almost impossible to give those distractions up, but while it may feel impossible, those in Christ have His Spirit dwelling in them. And by turning from our distractions to Jesus, He clears up the chaos and leads us to true life. God gave us as believers a promise that we should hold on to. Acts 2, 17 to 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Children of God have something to hold on to in the midst of perilous times. And this should give you comfort. God has promised not to leave you. He has promised to pour out His Spirit. And if you really read this closely, God is promising spiritual power for believers. And when God's Spirit is poured out, then the gifts of Spirit will also come upon us as children of God. Gifts such as discernment, peace, love, wisdom, all will increase with the outpouring of God's Spirit. So regardless of what's going on in the world, as believers, we know this. As we edge closer and closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only place for us to seek refuge and strength is in the presence of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Perilous times will come in the last days, 
but keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and He will deliver you. God gave us as believers a promise that we should hold on to. Acts 2, 17-18 And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my Spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. Children of God have something to hold on to in the midst of perilous times. And this should give you comfort. God has promised not to leave you. He has promised to pour out His Spirit. And if you really read this closely, God is promising spiritual power for believers. And when God's Spirit is poured out, then the gifts of Spirit will also come upon us as children of God. Gifts such as discernment, peace, love, wisdom, all will increase with the outpouring of God's Spirit. So regardless of what's going on in the world, as believers, we know this. As we edge closer and closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only place for us to seek refuge and strength is in the presence of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Perilous times will come in the last days, but keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and he will deliver you.